Good morning. I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for March 25th, 2022. It's Friday. I've gotten a bunch of questions, but given the just the, the total complexity of the situation and the onrushing of events, I'm going to combine most of these questions. But you've been asking what's Biden doing in Europe? Who's talking to Biden? Who's making his policy? What is Putin up to? What are the Russians doing? Uh, are all of these Westerners just effing crazy? Are we headed toward nuclear war? So let me put this together as, as a picture to try to answer these questions and, and give you the ammunition you need to go out and organize. Because the most important thing is not to try to construct a, a scenario, but to become part of a mobilization to change history. This is a moment in time where the individual has more responsibility than ever, because at a moment when the narratives are crazy, when there's censorship, when the truth is, is being lost in the fog of war, it's the person who knows what they're talking about and has a passion for the fight and a love of mankind that can make a difference in history. And I'm calling on you to join us now to provide that. So let's start with Biden in Europe. What, what he's, what's he doing? He's doubling down on the arrogant, misbegotten idiocy which has placed us in this situation in the first place, in, the, in a, a course toward possible nuclear war. You have Jake Sullivan before Biden headed to Europe. <clears throat> Jake Sullivan talking about uh, the potential contingency of nuclear war. You have Biden insisting that the Russians are about to use chemical and biological weapons when the Russians have exposed that it's the U.S. that's operating biological weapons labs in Ukraine. Uh, you have the Western narrative that the Russians are conducting brutal, barbaric assaults on the civilian population, even as they admit that the number of civilian casualties is far fewer than even the first hours of the shock and awe policy that was conducted in Iraq by the West. Uh, they also say Russia's bogged down. Well, they, they seem to be missing the strategy of the Russians, which is not to carry out slaughter of civilians, but to uh, destroy the military of Ukraine and to prevent Ukraine from being used as a launching pad against Russian population in the eastern part of Ukraine or against Russia itself. You have commentary from war correspondent William Arkin, from uh, the retired Colonel Douglas McGregor and others, who say that the Russians are doing what they intended to do to destroy the Ukrainian military. So, and then you have the ir irony of Zelensky being hailed as a hero when he's, on the one hand, reading a script about the heroic, valiant effort to defeat the Russians, and then on the other hand saying, well, we don't need to go into NATO, we can negotiate Minsk too, then why was this started in the first place? Because he's a puppet of the U.S. and NATO forces who are using this to destroy Russia and also to target China, as became clear when Biden spoke at the European Union meeting and also the G7. Now, what's going on? What's, what is it that NATO, the European community, and the G7 agreed to? Well, more weapons, more intelligence and logistical support. In other words, continue the war. Not try to de-escalate, not to reach compromises, but to continue the war. Send more troops and more money to NATO, and for NATO to spend more. But the idea of more American troops in countries like Poland, Estonia, uh, and even eventually possibly Ukraine, more sanctions. Now, again, no de-escalation, no compromise, more war. And what we're seeing is the uh, inevitable uh, counter that's coming from Putin and the Russians to the sanctions. As Medvedev said that sanctions are stupid, the former Russian president, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, they're stupid. 
All they do is increase the support of the Russian people for the Russian government. Why? Because misery is being inflicted on them by Western forces. Now, uh, Sergei Glaziev, who is a, at times an advisor to Putin, has been doing a series of presentations where he's talking about how this situation of sanctions can lead to a complete transformation of the Russian economy. Now, some of this has to do with the Russia-China uh, economic alliance and the integration of the Eurasian economic sphere with the Chinese. This is something which is obvious. It's been, under, it's been going on with the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, the Europeans are itching to become part of this, not just for the oil and gas, but for the markets that are available in Russia, China, South Asia, and so on. But they're now not reachable because the West has decided to destroy Russia and China to defend a financial system which is collapsing and which is killing people worldwide. And instead, you have Russia and China who are offering an alternative. So and what's the alternative to? Against the Great Reset. Countries do not want to give up their economic sovereignty. That's what they've been doing in the whole period of the post-Cold War order. That's what the International Monetary Fund does to countries. Conditionalities, structural adjust adjustment plans. This is what has been done to destroy the potential of nations to develop and improve the lives of their people. China, which is rejecting the Great Reset, rejecting this, this top-down control, which takes away sovereignty, is uplifting its population from poverty, over 800 million people. And now they're extending this into Africa, into Asia, into Latin America. Now you have moves toward this with the Russian situation. Uh, besides Russia, China, you have India reaching agreements of rupee for the ruble. You have the Chinese and the Saudis, with the Saudis accepting yuan in payment for oil. And now you have the backfiring of sanctions with Putin saying that people, unfriendly nations, which wish to purchase Russian oil and gas, must do so with rubles. Well, what is he doing for that, from, by, by insisting on that? Two things come up immediately. One, the ruble becomes a commodity-backed currency, not a fiat funny money currency like the dollar and the euro. And then secondly, it shows that countries don't need the dollar anymore. You can deal in other currencies. And, and keep in mind also that the Russians and the Chinese have a huge amount of gold and that the possibility of a return to a gold reserve system to undo the damage since 1971 of the floating exchange rate system, which gives the central banks power to degrade currencies for the sake of speculative ventures. This is part of the backfire potential, but it's a good backfire, especially when you have a hyperinflation that's caused by this policy that harms virtually everyone. So we have an opportunity to get back toward the kind of economic process that Lyndon LaRouche had talked about with his advocacy of physical economy, credit for investment in real production, and the, a trading system which is based on credit for goods, credit for investment in infrastructure platforms, and credit that goes into scientific and uh, technological research and development. That's where we're headed. Now, that's good for the United States. It would be good for Europe. Who would it be bad for? The city of London, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, the military industrial complex. Who benefits when we flood Ukraine with weapons? It's the military industrial complex. So you have to think this thing through. This military industrial complex is destroying itself. The question is, will the civilization go down with it? Will the populations of the world continue to accept the authorities who they see every night on the news and in the media? Or will they recognize them for the self-interested, greedy imbeciles who are threatening humanity in order to keep their rules-based order? So the question then is, what is this Ukraine situation all about? 
It's about the attempt by the oligarchy to impose their new order under the idea of a great reset and a green new deal. An end to sovereign nation states. All economic policy will be handled by technocrats um, chosen by the central banks and the private banks that they represent. Remember, central banks are not government institutions. They're collectives run by the private banking system. That's who issues the debt. That's who sells the debt. And that's who profits from the debt. While your debt increases, they're making a profit on every sale they make. So the the what what the city of London's neoliberal global order represents is an end to sovereign nation states, an end to scientific and technological development. No credit for these areas. No credit for oil exploration. No credit for projects such as nuclear fusion. No projects for, such as space exploration. They're all going to be cut. And in that sense, they're attempting to fulfill the dream of those who use people like Greta Thunberg of assuring that there's no future for the majority of mankind. Now, this future is not going to work. We're going to seize back the, the initiative for an uh, order of sovereign nation states collaborating for the benefit of each other and recognizing that benefiting the neighbor has benefits for you. In fact, it's the only way. Security is not a one-way street. To, to have security at the expense of other nations means you're laying the seeds for future war. And that's what Putin tried to explain repeatedly to Biden, to Obama, to uh, the Bushes. But they never got it because they represent the global order. So this tide is shifting. Join us to make sure we succeed. Now, there's much more I could say about this, but I would urge you to watch the dialogue I had with Helga Zeppelin-Rusch yesterday. It was our weekly webcast dialogue. We'll put the link at the bottom of the description. But she made some in incredibly important points with the level of passion that's required to organize people. Um, so I, I would urge you to, to look at that, think through what I'm saying, and instead of being defensive, people know the media is a bunch of liars. We've seen this over and over and over. So we have to seize the initiative. We have to present the programs that benefit the human race. And we do it proudly and aggressively. And I would urge you to join us in doing that. So thanks for joining me today and share this video, get other people involved. If your family is too thick-headed to listen to you, find another family. I'm kidding about that, but keep working on them. So thanks, and I'll see you next week.